Join us as we delve into the heart of Dustin Poirier's story, exploring the defining moments that shaped his career and turned him into a true legend. Witness the relentless determination that propelled him through countless trials and tribulations as he overcame obstacles with unwavering resolve. Poirier's inspiring journey will keep you hooked as you witness the transformation of an underdog into a superstar. From his breathtaking UFC debut against a formidable title contender to his remarkable battles for the lightweight championship, every step of Poirier's awe-inspiring ascent will leave you breathless. Welcome to the MMA sector. Dustin Poirier grew up in a rough area of Lafayette, Louisiana. During his early childhood, Poirier ended up in many fights, ultimately forcing him to drop out of school in the ninth grade. However, in doing so, it seemed to ignite a desire within him to work toward achieving something in life. While Poirier played a variety of sports throughout his childhood, he never liked any enough to commit to them long term. It would take a few more years until Poirier found his life's purpose, one that would lead him to where he is today. During the years following Poirier's withdrawal from school, he struggled to find a passion. This led to his decision to leave home when he was just 17, hoping this would keep him out of trouble. Not long after he left home, Poirier decided to take up boxing, a path that would eventually lead him to join the local MMA gym in his town. Some of the local MMA guys would come to the boxing gym for sparring sessions and Poirier initially befriended them before deciding to get in touch with their coach. After an initial chat on the phone with the MMA coach, who recalls Poirier was one of the few guys who committed to fighting fairly quickly, Poirier decided to join the MMA gym. He trained as much as he could while working a full-time job delivering construction equipment around his local area. Poirier trained every day for almost a year before he decided to take his first amateur fight. He made his amateur MMA debut in Arkansas and finished his opponent via a first-round knockout. Knockout. After initial success on the amateur circle in and around Louisiana, Poirier eventually turned pro in 2009. He was quick to amass an impressive 7-0 professional record, earning some highlight reels in the process. Glimpses of Poirier's early MMA career and many of his best moments were included in a documentary titled Fightville, centered on various fighters and coaches from Lafayette, Louisiana. Following Poirier's initial success in regional promotions that spanned his native Louisiana and southern part of the United States, he was approached by one of the largest MMA promotions of the era. World Extreme Cage Fighting came knocking and wanted to offer the rising star his first major professional contract. Poirier made his WEC debut against a well-rounded fighter known as Danny Castillo. While the fight had its moments with both fighters showing their impressive skill set, Castillo ultimately took home a unanimous decision victory. This was Poirier's first taste of defeat since becoming a professional fighter. However, this didn't halt his progress, and Poirier went straight back to training and lined up another fight. Poirier was determined to prove to the promotion that he deserved to fight the best they had to offer. For his next fight, Poirier was matched up with Zachary Micklewright, and the fight went down at WEC 52 on the 11th of November 2010. This time, Poirier was determined to take home the victory. He started the fight strong, using forward pressure and pinpoint striking to earn a TKO victory in round one. Make it out of here. He is hurt. He is hurt. Before Poirier had the chance to make it two wins in a row, the World Extreme Cage Fighting merged with the UFC in the latter part of 2010. By the start of the following year, all of the fighters on the WEC roster were integrated into the new company. This meant that Dustin Poirier would now be looking to make his UFC debut, and he wanted it as soon as possible. Jose Aldo was scheduled to take on Joss Grisby at UFC 125, yet the champion had to pull out due to a back injury. Poirier saw his chance and put forth his name as Aldo's replacement, and surprisingly, the UFC agreed. This was a huge fight for Poirier, considering Grisby was the number one contender for the featherweight title. Even though Poirier was considered a great up-and-coming fighter for a 21-year-old, he couldn't help but feel he was already being counted out, stating this in various interviews in the lead-up to his fight with Grisby. However, Poirier had a mindset that enabled him to turn the negative comments into motivation, and he was excited to take on the title contender. The pair were scheduled as the co-main event of UFC 125. The fight itself was a complete surprise for spectators who were going to watch a fighter make his debut against one of the highest ranked contenders in the division. Yet fans would be shocked even further as they watched the young Poirier dominate the fight. Poirier showed his level of skill in all aspects of the fight, especially in the striking department. Of the tie clinch here, and Poirier won it. Yep. Beautiful elbow. And the uppercuts. My goodness. 
proving to the world in the process that he was capable of hanging with the best the UFC had to offer even at his young age. Poirier was now beginning to be recognized for his serious skill set. Many began to agree that his striking abilities were to be feared by all who set foot in the octagon with him. Poirier's many years of boxing training were finally beginning to pay off, with some already arguing he was one of the best boxers in the UFC. His typical brawling style ensured that no matter who he shared the octagon with, it would either end badly for his opponent or the fans would witness an absolute brawl in the center of the cage. Following his victory over Grisby, Poirier went on a three-fight winning streak, defeating Jason Young and Pablo Garza, before finishing a young Max Holloway via a triangle armbar in the first round back at UFC 143. However, following this, Poirier would taste his first UFC defeat when he headlined a UFC event against the Korean zombie Yung Chan Sung on May 15, 2012. This defeat didn't phase the rising star, and Poirier was adamant that he would continue to climb up the UFC's rankings. Over the next two years, he amassed a record of four wins and one loss, earning two highlight reel finishes in the process. Poirier. Oh, of course, Hani's in a world of pain here. This one might be done. This led him to ultimately the largest fight of his career thus far, a night in the octagon with the rising Irish superstar Conor McGregor. Poirier vs. McGregor went down at UFC 178 in September 2014. In the lead-up to the fight, it received great press, increasing Poirier's level of stardom. Fans knew they could be in for a fight full of elite-level striking, considering both of these competitors loved to keep the fight on its feet. While fans thought they'd be in for a three-round brawl, McGregor was able to claim a TKO victory over Poirier in the the first round. Following this defeat to McGregor, Poirier decided to move up a weight class to the lightweight division. Poirier later revealed the reason behind this was he struggled with the weight cuts and wanted to continue fighting as much as he could. When Poirier decided to move up to lightweight, fans were hoping that we would still get the same heavy pressure brawling fight style that we'd become accustomed to, and Poirier didn't disappoint. As the years went on, Poirier had been fine-tuning every aspect of his game, ultimately becoming one of the greatest strikers to ever grace the octagon in the process. The rate at which Poirier was improving showed in his first five lightweight matchups where he earned three knockout finishes, as well as being knocked out once himself by Michael Johnson. Poirier bounced back from this defeat by earning a majority decision victory over Jim Miller at UFC 208. After this, Poirier would get matched up with Eddie Alvarez, one of the best UFC lightweights of his generation. The pair met inside the octagon at UFC 211 on May 13, 2017. Unfortunately, to the dismay of the fans, the fight was cut short following an illegal knee by Alvarez. After his no contest with Alvarez, Poirier was set to go on one of the best streaks of his life ultimately leading to his first UFC title shot. Poirier would finish three of the best fighters in the division by TKO, starting with Anthony Pettis on November 11, 2017. Control here from Dustin. Stays on top, gets him out, not impressive. Following this, Poirier earned victories over the heavy brawler Justin Gaethje and Eddie Alvarez in a rematch via knockout in the space of three months in 2018. This earned him an interim title fight and rematch with Max Holloway that went down at UFC 236 in April 2019. Holloway was looking to earn himself champ champ status, whereas Poirier was in search of his first taste of UFC gold. Ultimately, Poirier won the back and forth fight via unanimous decision and became the UFC's interim lightweight champion. That night, he also broke Holloway's 13 fight unbeaten streak, earning himself a fight of the night bonus in the process. After this victory, Poirier's next fight was already lined up, a chance to unify his interim championship and become the UFC's undisputed lightweight champion. But first, he would have to get through the immovable force that was Khabib Nurmagomedov. Poirier met Khabib at UFC 242 on September 7, 2019. While fans were hoping that Poirier might be the one to stop the destructive force that is Khabib, it wasn't to be. While Poirier put up a good fight and even locked Khabib in a tight guillotine in round three, Khabib managed to escape. <laughs> Following his escape, Poirier was clearly exhausted, and Khabib capitalized on this, finishing Poirier later in the round via a rear naked choke.
After failing to become champion, it was back to the drawing board for Poirier. His next fight would see him earn an impressive unanimous decision victory over Dan Hooker on a fight night card in June 2020. This led Poirier to a much anticipated rematch against the former champ champ Conor McGregor, with the pair set to face off at UFC 257 in January 2021. Poirier would finish the Irish superstar via technical knockout in the second round. Oh, oh, oh no. my god! That's the ball! Oh, oh, knockout for Poirier! Oh, my god. Poirier! Becoming the first fighter in the process to defeat McGregor via knockout in a professional MMA fight. It now stood at one win apiece for Poirier and McGregor. Thus, the UFC decided that a trilogy fight was necessary to settle the score once and for all. Poirier and McGregor met again six months later at UFC 264. However, this time things went horribly wrong for McGregor. The referee stopped the fight in round one and labeled the finish a technical knockout. Yeah, they both missed. It looked like they Look, came together. He fell back on his own yep. ankle yes, and broke yes. it. That is crazy. After the fight, it was revealed McGregor suffered a broken tibia, which rendered him unfit to continue. Following two impressive victories over a superstar like Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier earned another shot at the lightweight title. This time, he would face off against the Brazilian menace Charles Oliveira. Poirier met Oliveira inside the octagon at UFC 269 on December 11, 2021, and it must have seemed like deja vu for the contender. Like his last title fight, he put up a good fight, hitting Oliveira with some powerful shots. Yet just like his fight against Khabib two years earlier, Poirier was submitted in the third round via rear naked choke. It's, it's, under, the neck. it's, it's under, under the neck! neck. It's under the neck! He's He's out. Following his loss to Oliveira and again missing out on his chance to become the UFC's undisputed lightweight champion, Poirier wouldn't compete for another year. Michael Chandler had been calling out Poirier continuously for some time before Poirier finally accepted the matchup and the pair met at UFC 281 on November 12, 2022. This fight was set to bring fireworks to the event, considering both fighters loved nothing more than to brawl in the middle of the octagon. It was an explosive fight between the two heavy hitters, and while Chandler was able to land some wild punches, Poirier looked slightly sharper on his feet and utilized various technical strikes to break Chandler down. In the third round of the fight, Poirier was able to finish Chandler via a rear naked choke. Following this, Poirier hoped to earn one more high-ranked win, which would likely lead him back to a fourth title shot. However, it has recently been announced that we will see Poirier return to the octagon for a rematch with Justin Gaethje, but this time the pair will be competing for the BMF belt, a title recently relinquished by Jorge Masvidal following his retirement. This fight is set to go down at UFC 291 on July 29th. Show us some love by liking and subscribing. Thank you for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one.